Now, Martha, the only thing that's real important is um, when, when we edit the show, you won't hear my questions. So will I be talking to you? Yeah, talk to me, basically. I mean, on, on camera. Will you be replaced? or No, you there, no it'll just be okay. you on camera. What's your name again? My name is Pat. Pat. So don't say Pat. I won't say, okay. don't say Pat. No, don't say Pat. Oh. <laughs> it's easier when you're talking to someone. Yeah. Okay, I remember not to say yeah. Pat. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can say you. You know, that's fine. Okay. Hey, you. Um. Um, but I need you to talk in complete phrases as much as possible. So if I say, you know, what do you think about the weather today? You'd need to say, I think the weather today is. Turn so into I Chatty Cathy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay. I have a pickup point. All right. Oh, we do. <coughs> okay. So let's just get started then. Let's talk first a little bit about the Motown fashions. Who created them? Do you remember? We had a series of uh, designers. Uh, the one that I can call to mind easily is Michael Ross. I remember at a time he costumed not only the, the Martha and the Vandellas, but he did the Supremes and the Marvelettes all at the same time. Um, most of the designs were, oh, we had a woman by the name of Helen who sewed designs for us. She costumed us for the Ed Sullivan show. Um, we've had people traveling with us. A guy by the name of uh, Greg James traveled and he coordinated a lot, a lot of things that I bought in different department stores, a lot of things that he designed. Uh, through the years, I've had uh, Otis Caver to design for me, um, names that are now long gone in my, in my memory, but uh, people that have helped us along the way. There was no one person that I could uh, point to and say designed fashions per se. We were styled, though. We did have a mode, and we were uh, tutored by uh, Mrs. Maxine Powell as far as uh, actual staging and, and coordinating of fashions and any ideas that she might have that uh, would enhance our ability to appear uh, together as, as performers. Did you have, um, Martha, did you have any say in what you wore or was it pretty much dictated? I didn't want very much say in what we wore because my main concern was what we sounded like, uh, how we coordinated our uh, choreography and how we presented our vocals. I wasn't that um, much on fashion. I, I'm still not that up on setting a style or, or following trends as far as design and fashions are concerned. Did uh, it seem like in, in the early years uh, you never saw a Motown act in anything other than formal wear, ball gowns or tuxedos and very elaborate um, hairdos. Why was that? I still love that. That's the magic of show business. That's the fantasy of it all. Uh, to dress up and to, you know, you get all your good, you know, bath gels and bubble baths out before a show. You do a lot of preparing and it helps you mentally as well to kind of sit around in some bubbly stuff that, to make yourself smell good and to go to the, to the shop and get your hair done as best you can and to be as elaborate and as fancy as you can. It was part of the fun of, of performing. It made it special. It was a special time. I wouldn't dare try and perform or to feel like a performer with maybe some faded jeans and a, and a ragged t-shirt unless that was the, the scene that I was playing at the time. But show business means getting dressed up and, and going into the, the fantasy and, and the wildness of, of style and dress. When you were a little girl, did you like to dress up? Did oh you yeah, like to play dress up? definitely. We have uh, 11 in my family. I have six brothers and four sisters. I'm the oldest girl, so I had not only fun dressing up myself, but I also toyed with my sisters. I did their hair and, and dressed them up to, a, 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 to the extreme. They complained a lot. <laughs> but they all turned out to be beautiful girls, so I, I think I helped a bit. Everything that I learned at Motown or at any uh, lessons uh, about fashion and style, I'd go and experiment on them as far as hairdos and makeup and the uh, style of dress were concerned. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Lois later joined me in the Vandellas, so it was to some avail. Oh, terrific. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about the Motown Charm School. Did you really, did you have to walk around with a book on your head? Was it like that or, or what was it really? What did Maxine do for you? Maxine was about the warmest and the kindest uh, human being that we had encountered in, in our show business world. We were introduced to her as early in our career as maybe 64, 65. And she took her time uh, with each lady individually, but she also uh, taught us in a class. We would be in the same room, perhaps uh, on a given occasion with uh, the Marvelettes, the Supremes, and uh, we would 
practice what we were taught. She taught us to stand, she taught us to sit, she taught us to eat properly, sit on stools properly, and uh, all of it we needed because I was a cheerleader in high school, a bit of a, a rowdy. I was a tomboy as a teenager and an adolescent, so we needed uh, taming down. We needed to be taught some things that would make us socially uh, assertive. Did, uh, did most of this pertain to your to your stage show, or was it a lot of it taught to you for, for dealing with the general public and, and interviews, et cetera, et cetera, also? I used what I was taught by Maxine Powell and all the, the rest of the people that Motown were ingenious enough to hire. I use it every day. I use it uh, getting out of bed or going, getting in the car or, or moving anywhere. I think every lady deserves uh, t you know, a bit of uh, training and charm and how to handle your, yourself, how to present yourself. I think, it's, I think it's wonderful. First of all, I get real nervous when I perform. And uh, some of the things she taught and other kind people have taught help to relax you and to calm you down for performing. Do you, um, do you remember or do you, do you have a favorite outfit that you wore? Do you have one special one that you remember? Oh, wow. We've had, we had so many things. We had, uh, at one time, I think we had as many as 50 costumes you know, a three of a kind that we carried around in the good old days. Uh, I remember jumpsuits that I loved. I uh, remember feathers. I remember sequins. I still wear some of the things. Some of my costumes now are chosen because they remind me of the old styles and the formal dresses that we wore in our earlier days, the font hairdos and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, um, it, it's, it's interesting to me uh, talking to you about, about what you went through and the fact that you were styled and, 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 and you took very many steps to be a lady on stage also. It doesn't exist today, does it? Not as uh, concentrated an effort is made to present uh, the talent today. I think the, the, the rules are a little looser than they were before. We had to qualify um, to belong. We had to fit a certain mode or we didn't get in the door. Uh, there was uh, also people who would tell you if, they, if you could sing or not, if you had talent that was worth investing their time in. And uh, we did a bit of auditioning in our earlier days that uh, let me know we had something to offer as a talent. Uh, it was worth it every minute, I think. What is your, is, is there anybody out there today um, with, the, with the female rock stars that you see like Cindy or Madonna we were talking about um, a little bit earlier? Uh, is there anybody you think that has a lot of style that's out there today? It's turned into an interesting business. Um, it used to be a thing where you were just a singer and dancer. Now you find dancers and singers, or you find uh, models and singers and dancers, or you might find um, uh, a secretary, which were some of my roots, secretary turned model turned singer turned actress. So uh, the business is, is filled with a variety, and I think uh, what I said to myself in my earlier days still rings true. There's room for every star in the sky. That's a great, that's a great phrase, <laughs> most definitely. Um, there were some early female rockers like Brenda Lee and Connie Francis and Annette Funicello, etc. And they had a very straight public image. You know, right. they had the little ribbons in their hair and they had the shirt waists yes. and the petticoats. Um, why couldn't a female rocker at that time be as blatantly sexual as the males in the 50s, do you think? Well, I think women's lib has a lot to do with that. Um, but people are freer now than before. Uh, when I first ended show business, there was a rumor that rock and roll wouldn't last. And they were saying it on TV, they were scrutinizing Elvis for his pelvic movements, and they were putting everyone on, laying everyone on the line. And then the flower power happened. Love became the extreme as opposed to who you are and where you came from. And we married, uh, the Americans I think, we all married at that point uh, through the hippie movement or whatever you want to call it. I felt that we grew up to reality and that everyone can do whatever they want to do now as long as they don't hurt or offend anybody. It's a nice place to be, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real nice place to be. Um, there was also, you know, at, in the 50s and 60s, uh, the girl groups like the Ronettes and the Shangri-Las. Yeah. And they were sort of the tough girls. Yes. As opposed to the Motown girl groups who were, uh, 
who were much more refined and much more ladylike. Did you ever, did you ever wish that you could just sort of break out of that formal gown and be one of the a leader of the pack at some point? No, uh, we had a statement to make, and um, we did our best to stay in the mold that we were designed to be in. Uh, Motown was a dream, I think, of Barry Gordy's, and uh, in it he saw girls uh, standing erect going as far as they can in style and fashion and doing all they could to present themselves the best they could. And we've always like, uh, had a determination to be the best uh, at whatever we did. And we were at that time. And we still are doing a, a, a very good job of holding on. I uh, see Mary Wilson a lot of the Supremes. And she still puts on a dynamite show. And she still presents herself the elegant lady that she is. And, I uh, speak with Kim Weston, who is now training and developing the young talent of today. She has a school uh, here in the city funded by the mayor. Uh, the city employs her to present new talent, and uh, she's training them with some of the things that she learned and some of the things that uh, we all learned as, as a group at Motown Records. That's fabulous. That's, thank you. All right. Thank you. You were wonderful. Our manager peeped in the door. <laughs> was that a distraction or what? No, I tried not to fine. turn and speak to him. Yeah, that's it. Yeah.